Welcome to Texas! He's a 10. I choose this family. Hey guys, welcome to episode 113 of 91 Lone Star Roundup. I'm one of your hosts, Katie, and with me are my lovely co-hosts, Grace and EJ. Hello. Hello. Today, we will be sharing our season 7, like, mid-season wish list since we had this little break for 911. Um, And we'll probably talk about theories also for, like, the upcoming episodes. Well, mostly for episode 6, because that's pretty much all we know at this point. thought this would be fun since, you know, like, 911 is back, like, today, the, the day that this episode is going live so mm -hmm. finally it feels like forever <laughs> i know and like so all huge. my shows were like on breaks and i'm just like oh my god like it felt like forever well and this was a break we were not used to like this length of time for the drafts and stuff i was like wow i don't know if i've ever watched a show that's been on break this long for something like that so oh, they did yeah. a pretty good job in keeping interest up though that's true oh, they yeah. Did. yeah that is very true um but yeah let's get to the wish list i guess i know we don't have like a ton and ton but i don't know it's still fun to talk about so right. i don't know i was thinking about buck first i don't know there's like so much for buck and my one thing that i don't want this is like an anti-wish list it's like one thing please let him like not get hurt because like throughout like this whole show we've had him it's like get hurt get hurt okay okay right. let's not have him get hurt let's have him get hurt okay we're he's getting hurt again and it's just like I'm like, can we even like, can we let somebody else like yeah. take over for just like give us like a little bit? Because like, I'm like, I swear everyone's like, oh my God, I'm waiting for him to get hurt. Okay, let me just change the narrative for a second. How about Tommy gets hurt and then Buck has to freak out about that? I like oh, that I'm idea. All on board I'm all that. for that. Like, not that I'm, I want Tommy to get hurt either, but I get what you're saying. I want him to like, be freaking out about his boyfriend and being like, ah, because he's not all that used to you know being on the other side of it either mm -hmm. especially with someone he's in a relationship or at least talking to mm -hmm. yeah Native, yeah honestly like the only person relationship wise that he's been with that i really care that he's um worried about mm -hmm. yeah 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 i definitely i definitely agree i feel like Buck has been one of the most injured ones on the show, and I feel like we need to share the wealth a little bit on that. So it would be nice if we had some other characters getting injured. And I also would love to see him just exploring his new, like, newfound sexuality. And um, oh yeah, for sure. And, and, and he's dealing... gonna get late night googles of yeah, him diving just... into things. His, That's what I want. Know, like questions, and you know, seeking out like advice from Hen. And I know, you know, like there's been talk like of him not having any more grand like coming out scenes with any other characters which is kind mm -hmm. of a bummer because I was really hoping he'd come out to Bobby um, I heard so I heard Oliver had said that Buck will in the next episode be coming out to like other people but like it's not gonna be like this huge thing like it's gonna right. be subtle yeah. which I actually well, kind of like because the next episode is more maddening focused mm -hmm. well, so it doesn't even have to do with that, that. It's just like I don't know. It's just not. Gonna yeah, it's, be. it's just gonna be that probably Tommy shows up and they kiss or they hug or something, and that yeah, um, it's just like I, oh, that's happening. Okay, yeah, I and think, then just kind of move on. Yeah, I think he, I think Buck will probably like say something, but it just and I'm honestly kind of excited about that because I'm like like it's not really necessary for him to have like this huge moment with everyone, and I think if he mm -hmm. did, it would kind of just I don't know, it would make it like as special well for one thing also for when it comes to the topic of coming out for a queer person we're coming out for the rest of our life right. every new person we meet every person in our life right. unless we are actively choosing to keep it from somebody if we right. have that option um mm -hmm. we are coming out to for the rest of our life so not yeah. every be a big one right. um if i would want a another big coming out scene it would either be bobby or be hen because yeah those two in particular Mm -hmm. specifically uh, bobby like for me yeah. like and mm -hmm. like also I, like a big sister and being like a, you know kind of like i'll 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 help out the baby gay here a little bit or the baby bob oh yeah yeah that <laughs> yeah 
Um, but like I'm I'm kind of okay if they don't do another or if they do if he just like sits the 118 down at large and just like this is me or if he kisses because we we don't really know if we're going to be getting like many before the wedding scenes other than the bachelor party in the next episode so I don't know but I also like Parmi doesn't want his coming out to be like a kiss at the wedding because that's a little overshadowing of Annie's day so yeah. we want to be respectful here but I don't know I think they'll make it cute no matter what yeah I, I want him doing like late night Googles and I want him may, maybe to wake, I don't know, freaking waking Tommy up being like, I think I'm bisexual. And Tommy's just there like, that's great, babe. <laughs> like, I want that. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Because Oliver did say that like, like, we'll kind of get more, like we kind of already know the label based on everything, but like it'll be more talked about in the next episode mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. I think what I was getting at with the coming out is I feel like of of all the characters, Bobby is like a father figure to Buck. Right. Um, and sure. so like, I'm really grateful that his sister and Eddie, the two closest people to him, but I feel like Bobby is kind of that third one. So I like, I really wish they like would address that, but then the rest, Grace is right. Like he's going to be coming out for the rest of his life. So like, it can't all be, but I was like, yeah, I see Bob is, Bobby is his like father figure. And so that was what I was like, oh, oh yeah, I, I love that. I love that. Mm-hmm. And I know like, everyone's like talking about like him having this like moment with talking about it with Penn, but like what about Josh? Yeah. Oh yeah, that could also yeah. be good. Yeah. Like in a later episode, maybe not this one, or maybe like a couple words in this episode because we know Josh is going to be in this episode. Yeah. Or, or maybe Maddie seeking advice from Josh. Yeah, that oh, could yeah. that could be interesting. Uh, yeah, or even if it doesn't, like, because obviously, like, we're kind of out of time time limit, being that we only have like five episodes left. Even That's if true. it was something that they revisited next season. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, this can absolutely be right because, like, regardless of whether, no, regardless of how Buck Tommy works, really, most of this is applicable no matter what happens. Right. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> And, like, I love that, like, like with all this stuff coming up and, like, all the, like, callbacks we're getting that I'm, like, even, like, when I'm watching scenes, I think I previous, previous scenes. Like, I love that, like, Madney and Buck and Josh scene where they're all oh, playing, like, I, was it poker or game. something? Yeah, some card game. Some card mm-hmm. game. And then I love, like, them being, like, oh, we decided, like, all our like dating friends are all busy tonight so we decided to target the singles and josh makes some comment like are you trying to set me up with your brother and maddie's like no i like you too much set you really up with your brother <laughs> so like i low-key want like a maddie and like tevin like double date game oh, night that yeah. something yeah. like that i think that'd, that'd be, be super funny. fun for them to do at some yeah. point like ah uh, that would be so fun because like jim and tommy like um like are whatever you want to they're friends because they, they keep in touch every once in a while that's been brought up in the past so like they already have that relationship and obviously maddie wants to get to know her brother's like boyfriend or whatever we what wherever we're going with this like tell me about the, want, cute pilot. Yeah. about the cute pilot yeah yeah so yeah. she wants it and i just it would be yeah. adorable it right? would yeah i'm all for that for sure I'm sure more will come up after oh, like, yeah. the weeks go on, but that's pretty much all I have mm-hmm. for Buck. Yeah, me too for now. So, Eddie, I don't have too much, but I'm excited for like the religious guilt storyline to come up because like when that came up, I'm like, okay, this is good. We're going in the right direction because like I feel like that's going to help him work towards other things too mm-hmm. and stuff. And this is just like a staple for anybody in the 118, but I would specifically for Eddie, I would love to see him back in therapy like i'm yeah. sure he is still in therapy yeah. and that is like an active part of his like life but i would love to see more of that yeah see it portrayed on screen yeah. for sure like come on give our give our frank a job <laughs> i know right I, that was that like i honestly want to rewatch like that like i want to re- rewatch everything now but like i specifically loved that storyline that was such a good storyline like it was it was just so good so i like eddie and therapy did wonderful healing things just for me (laughs) i know also can we bring back abuela 
I need yeah, him to be talking things through things with Abuela. Or Tia Peppa, but I th- I feel like I kind of want Abuela a little bit more. Maybe. I know, I know she's in Texas, but I like... I was just gonna say. <laughs> but like, you should come for a visit. FaceTime. Yeah. FaceTime visit something. She's always yeah, been one I... of Eddie's biggest supporters. I know. And I would love for like... Cause... So, like, when Eddie's sisters were on the show, they were only in the background. And I know people have been talking about this for three seasons, but, like, can we, like, actually, like, have face-to-face? Right? That would be nice. Yeah. Because, like, uh, I don't know. Like, we don't even know, like, what kind of relationship we have. We've just gotten, like, random mentions in, like, different scenes um, throughout the last couple of seasons. And I just feel like we need, like, that face-to-face to kind of... I don't know, it'd be nice, especially, like, the scenes of Chris, too. Like, seeing him yeah. interact with his with his um aunts. Like, that would be so nice. Yeah. Yeah. Like, would love to see that. Also, like, Eddie, please, my dear, please pay- break up with Marisol. <laughs> please. <laughs> and I just saw, like, a behind-the-scenes that Gavin posted that was, like, mm-hmm. her and him and, like, a scene um like walking into the house or something like walking that. into the house and everyone's like damn it eddie damn yeah. it you did not like why is she here like yeah. i just like i i know like because she came in so late in last season that like she probably is contracted but i'm just waiting for them to dump her ass if, if it reassures anybody she does not give all permanent vibes nothing about the relationship feels like it's gonna last all that long well, yeah, and I'm just like ABC has got us has had to see like what she has posted online and been like, well, we're just gonna finish out her contract and then she's off. I'm hoping. Right. I'm really. That's what hoping. I'm hoping. Yeah, I don't. Eddie was definitely rushing with the whole moving in, so I'm glad that they resolved that. Thank God. Um, Thank God. That I'm, was cringy. Yeah, that was so terrible. I, I was like, she's what? You guys barely like had two scenes together. What? I know. I know. Like. Also, like, how did he not have a panic attack from all that? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, I feel like contract-wise, she's probably in it for a few more episodes. But then after that, I I hope that they kick her butt to the curb as soon as possible. Because I don't like the character. Um, I don't I don't hate her. I just don't think she's the right character for, for person for Eddie. And I, you know, I want I want Eddie to have some more scenes with his son. I want Eddie doing things with his son, like going out and having father-son things because chris is what a teenager almost now or is now and i know that's wild Eddie's only got a few more years with him and i you know and i love the family bond that they've created with buck and i want to see more of that like even if it's platonic just buddy with chris um yeah they pulled buck into their family and i want to see more of that regardless of buck's relationship with tommy or potential relationship with eddie yes i'm a buddy shipper we all know that (laughs) (laughs) i'm like yeah so i want to see eddie resolving things figuring things out and not just following the structured path that he's learned from for his whole life and sit back and maybe reevaluate his life i don't know yeah Yeah. definitely has like a lot of stuff to like internally figure out and i feel like everyone does so that's pretty relatable yeah so bobby i well i've just heard things so i'm like really excited about these things i came out that like a nurse who supposedly like worked in the hospital in minnesota so like whole come whole come he's gonna be like coming like coming into the storyline i guess is a good way to put it um which i'm really excited about because i know the actor from like other shows and Mm -hmm. I don't know, like, a lot of people, like, somebody made a good point, because a lot of people were like, oh, so we're going back to Minnesota, and somebody was like, well, not necessarily, like, just imagine that, like, he works at a different hospital now, and that's how he, um, comes back, or comes back into, like, Bobby's life, or Bobby, like, it sees him again, like, I could see it happening that way, and I know, yeah. like, you know, there's, like, like, seven and eight are supposed to be, like, Bobby's centric episode um, more like surrounded around him so i'm really excited for that like one of the episodes is like titled not like word for word but like something around like step nine or something like like that oh so that's okay. really interesting any step references i love it and so i don't know i'm really excited for that storyline because like um bobby's family like dying has always been like a it's always it's always comes back up so like i'm excited to see like 
if this is like more closure for him or like what the storyline is or like where they go with this and there's yeah. just been so many things about bobby that they casually mention like there was that scene like a season or two ago where bobby mentions that all his ancestors like he comes from a long line of first responders and i'm like why aren't we visiting this and i know mm. i made the joke of like wait we're getting more bobby content okay this is like bobby begins begins again 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 <laughs> Again, again, again. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby begins again, again, again. Yeah, see, I'm Bobby begins. Then we got I'm Bobby giving it again. And then at this point, it's probably like again times like three. Right. <laughs> see, I'm very interested in this because step nine in AA is the Make is amends. one of the most difficult steps about making amends, and it's usually seeking forgiveness from the people you've harmed, and also seeking forgiveness of self. Uh, yes. Which is going to be very interesting. Yeah, I mean, it is because I've heard that with Malcolm Jamal Warner, Warner coming in, I feel like he's a big name. Like, he's not just, I mean, I've known him since he was Theo in the Cosby show, so I've known him for a long time. But it's not going to just be a quick storyline. It's, and I, I've heard stuff about it's not going to be necessarily a positive experience for Bobby. Mm. So I'm like, he, I either knew somebody in the fire that, that apartment fire that died or he lived in that building and yeah, lost family so in that ways. so i'm like this is definitely i'm excited for this storyline i really am i because i don't feel like we've ever really had bobby in this situation where he's had to truly face his past like we talked about it obviously in bobby begins because we learned more about it and he had to he was you know suspended they investigated the whole thing but like he doesn't, as far as we know, talk to anybody from Minnesota. We don't know of anyone that he can, you know, knows of that he was friends with in the building. So I'm curious where they're going with this, but I'm excited. I, I love Bobby content. I love his character. I do too. Yeah. I just mm -hmm. looked it up. So episode seven is called Ghost of a Second Chance. Episode mm -hmm. eight is called Step Nine. And then I don't know if this will like tie into that, but it's just interesting. Then nine is supposedly called Unfinished Business. So very interesting. I always love when the titles come out um, and you hear them right. and you're like, wait how is this going to tie into the episode or like because also because it always does because also episode nine we're potentially looking at a big emergency for the end of the season because we mm -hmm. have episode nine then episode 10 Ooh. then we're right. so what are we looking at there <laughs> i'm i'm kind of yeah i i'm I... nervous with bobby content mostly just because when it focuses around the addiction like that can yeah. be really difficult content Mm -hmm. um and it has to be handled very delicately which i think they've done a good job of in the past yeah that's true uh, but it is you know i i'm i'm lo i'm looking forward to it but i also have a little bit of apprehensiveness with this because i'm like okay so where are we going with this is it someone he indirectly harmed is it someone who worked yeah. in the hospital and worked on some right. of the patients mm -hmm. like yeah it, yeah there's a lot of questions and i'm looking forward to the answers but i know like you said it's seven and eight that we're looking at so yeah that's episode six is the one that's airing today which is the wedding and then okay cool yeah um i don't really have anything for athena but just tying that in yeah. i'm i know she has like the storyline with harry going on but honestly i'm not like that interested in it like yeah it's cool like he's back and it's been a couple seasons and i know like there was like a recast and that kind of stuff like i'm not really i don't know i'm not like really too interested in that storyline but i'm always excited to see like what what athena's doing mm-hmm and stuff and the Bobby Athena stuff this with the like first few episodes of the season was really good so I'm excited to see whatever they're doing or even like with the Bobby stuff coming up her just supporting him as she does like that's yeah. exciting and I know like at some point um Peter had mentioned that like May will come back like towards the end of the season so yeah. that'll be nice have like the little family back together yeah and I'm curious, is Harry going to be sticking around towards season eight? Are we going to see him go back to Michael and David? Like, what what are we looking at here? Because he's looking at us staying, you know, doing community service for a while, being supervised mm -hmm. by his mom, but where's that going to take us? So I'm like um, casually 
impressive Harry storyline. I don't think yeah. that, but yeah, I, I'm I'm figuring he'll definitely be here through the end of season seven. And I think part of the reason why Harry left when he did is I feel like the actor looking for a break from the show. Mm-hmm. and that was part of the reason why they wrote him out the way they did so i i feel like we'll have a little bit more because he's i don't think he's a senior in high school so he won't be graduating yet but he's probably got another year or so of school left um, i think they met, i think he's like 14 or 15 i think i heard he was 15 yeah, yeah. that's what i thought so yeah so he's about a sophomore now mm-hmm. yeah yeah he's either like a freshman or a sophomore yeah that's about right yeah so he's got a few years left to school and with what happened and they're you know they agree that they let you know athena be his um caretaker in that time i don't imagine he'll be going back to michael anytime soon but we'll yeah. See. yeah but we yeah know. you're right I, I i don't have a ton for athena but i definitely love the character and i love how they're balancing her as a mom and a police officer um, and dealing with kind of back and forth and it's not always like they're not taking it and spending this entire season focusing on her as a mom versus being a cop and things like that but she has gone through quite a bit um what well, season three and four and um, the family stuff and discovering what happened to her friend from florida and then obviously the cruise ship was a huge thing yeah i know like and so some sense it feels like we haven't really got much from Athena in in a while like I know she wasn't she wasn't one of the maybe I don't know see this is the point of a break like literally it's only been a couple weeks but I'm like forgetting everything (laughs) she's been there but she's also not been there so it's kind of like one of those things but also like you know with everything happening with chim with chimney in this next episode oh yeah Mm -hmm. gonna be getting involved in that like I can't see her not getting involved in it. No, yeah. Right. I remember, like, there was this one. It was probably in the promo where Tina's like, "We'll get him. We'll find him." And I'm just like, "Yeah, here we go." Like, oh yeah, Tina, go out on the hunt. Let's go on an adventure. Oh my God, yeah. Maddie. Ma- Ma- I don't know why. Every time I record either a video or I'm talking about Mad Maddie recently, I go <laughs> Maddie, and I'm like, Katie, stop. <laughs> I can't. I can't Oops. ever ever just i'm like it's such it's becoming like an, a speech impediment of mine because i'm just like maddie and no maddie like i have to maddie, yeah. it's a funny thing i've been doing <laughs> um but like maddie and uh athena like uh like i just i love Everyone, i love that because it reminds me when she first came into the show and like the yeah. season three and she went on that ride along with athena like it reminds me of I don't that. I have to call and you like, Bucket, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Season two, episode five. Awful people. Uh, yeah. Yes. We love that. Yes. <laughs> so next, Tommy, like old one eighteen, new coming back. Like I love that. I'm so like we really didn't get much of like Tommy and the and like the previous like episode like. When he was in the Begins episodes, we really didn't get to know him, like, personally, so I'd love to get to know him mm-hmm. personally now. And I know, like, Lou's made his own, like, backstory for Tommy. And then, like, I know also, like, um, Tim, like, kind of mentioned things to him uh, that, like, are there for Tommy, like, that he's, like, a little bit older than Buck and, like, that, mm-hmm. like, little background things. Um, mm-hmm. He comes from a broken home kind of deal yeah divorced parents that kind of stuff Um, so I was I was talking to my friend the other day mm -hmm. and I we were talking about Lou and I was like I was reading an article and somebody had said I think they'd he'd been asked about what it's like being the son of Hulk and I was like what so I had to go do his dad was the original Hulk I, was like, I, I oh my god it's like dawned on me why he looks so familiar yeah i knew that like i knew like some aspects but i didn't like dig into like the specifics but that is very interesting if there ever comes a reason for them to dress up for halloween i need him to dress up as the hulk i'm sure he's done that (laughs) i'm sure he's had to but yeah i'm excited to get to know like tommy i want to know like everything about him like i'm like please give me everything yeah. i want to begin this episode honestly <laughs> i do too like yeah. i don't know if that's asking for too much i don't think it is like i don't care. We, honestly like 
I miss the Begins episodes. Like, those are quite honestly my favorite episodes. Like, they're just so good. And, like, it's mm-hmm. nice to get, like, the background on And the last one we got people. was Buck in season four. I know. It's been a minute. We need to bring him back. So, please, do so. Um, okay. Like, well, when we're at it, what put Ravi in there? Yeah, well? I was just about to say that. Yeah, I was uh, literally yeah, yeah, just begins. about to say that. Like, Ravi, too, because they had mentioned that he, like, survived childhood cancer. So, like, um, we need to know more about his story. Like, come on now. Like, we love Ravi over here. Like, everyone loves Ravi. I've never heard anybody say, like, oh, I don't like Ravi. I'm sure there's one person How can you who's not always like one. Anyway, he's just sweet. Right? I know. Yeah, yeah he no, so is. Those- she begins I need yeah. agreed um yeah for Tommy I, I I definitely want to know more about his backstory um his military time how he became a oh, pilot yeah, I too. definitely want to know that um, and we also get a canonical age for him because this is currently a divide yeah. in the fandom I think it's <laughs> literally was... the biggest debate in I like I think a, I think a fair amount of us like me in particular I think he and Lou are the same age but a lot of people don't think that and so it's like I don't know I, I kind I, of I agree with that. Be. I think, like, especially when you're an adult, I feel like shows try to, like, make your character, for the most part, like, mm-hmm. closer to your age. Maybe not the exact yeah. same age, but I, just giving off vibes and the vibes I'm feeling, I just feel like Tommy is older than Buck and just with all, well, yeah. like, his history. Well, he he, not, like, a ton, but, like, he feels older so like i just this is like one of the things i need to be confirmed mm-hmm. yeah it would be would be nice because lou is i think was is born in 84 yeah um, he he will turn 40 uh, in november so i'm a year older than him huh okay um and then oliver i think is 91 so yeah and buck's <sighs> birthday has not been like he's he's either 91 or 92 birth baby we don't have mm-hmm. that fully confirmed yeah so he's either 31 or 32 in the coming year like buck wise yeah so yeah. yeah so we definitely i'm imagining he's a few years older i feel like he might be a little older than lou just because of what we know of him but that's okay i mean but yeah i i've definitely seen a divide in the people thinking like age-wise how old he is so people um, make it out like he's like 15 years older and i'm like okay he, not that not dramatic that, not like, that I'm, dramatic like maybe like max 10 years but i'm thinking like max. five to eight yeah if they if they went with the actor's ages or went with lou's age versus buck's age they'd be looking at seven to year seven to eight year age gap already and i think that's mm-hmm. pretty reasonable and it's also yeah. not dramatic like a lot i don't know maybe if they were just people that are thinking eight years is dramatic and i'm like maybe maybe that's not your preference but that's not a dramatic age yeah especially for people that are in their like 30s even if yeah. you're in your late 20s like a 10 year age gap is like nothing because when you're like that much of an adult it's just like yeah whatever age is just a number right yeah my parents were seven eight seven years apart so there's no like age is just a number once you hit like 35 you're like eh, whatever <laughs> i yeah. know yeah um, yeah i mean yeah there's you know some concern about age but not to the you know it, it yeah so I everyone's no... not developing by this point like everyone's reached full adult maturity by this point oh, like yeah. brain wise and all that so it's like it's fine yeah your brain stops cooking and like you're fully supposedly developed around 25 to 26 so after that you know pretty much eh. and I know there's always that joke that boys mature slower than women or girls and which sometimes is true it depends on the kids so... that part <laughs> I'm so yeah, I love yeah. you, Buck, but like he does fit that part. He's grown a lot though in the past yeah, like so four much. seasons. So like I don't feel like get, saying that as much anymore, but like he definitely did fit that part. And right. he's, like he's a little boyish just as he is, and that's okay because that's a little more of a personality trait than that is mm-hmm. a lack of mature. And that's fine. Um uh, mm-hmm. I love Buck. He re- actually reminds me of this guy I work with. Um, like, he really does. Like, I look at this guy all the time, 
and I swear to God, I'm like, oh my God, he's Buck. He's like a literal golden retriever. Like yesterday, I sat down to eat my lunch, and I didn't even realize he was sitting down. He goes, oh my God, I have a friend eating lunch with me. <laughs> I was like, Aww. yeah, sure. Oh, that's cute. Uh, so, yeah. He reminds me very good old Buck. But well, when you yeah. said he reminded you of Buck, I was like, does he have a lot of near death experiences? Because that also <laughs> would remind us. He does. Right? He, does. he would be the one to hurt himself one time. He cut his fingertip off with scissors. And I don't even understand how he did that. How do you do that? I've almost nicked myself with scissors before. Yeah. But like nothing mm-hmm. like that. Like I've never cut off my fingertip. Mm-mm. Oh god. Yeah, so yes, yeah. like I do see that similarity. <laughs> okay, so he's Buck. We have a real life Buck here. <laughs> we do, we do, for sure. Yep, we do. And yeah. then Tevin. I'm so like that makes me I I'm just excited about name. them. I am. Like uh I'm just really excited just seeing like where the relationship goes. I feel like mm-hmm. um just seeing them date them getting to know each other possibly buck dragging tommy around to like every 118 gathering please i need it i need him to be part of the family again Mm -hmm. i know like i definitely want him to experience the current 118 i know yeah yeah, because i think it'd be very healing for him and probably oh yeah for sure it would definitely like it would definitely heal like the past traumas of the 118 like Mm -hmm. I'm I'm it would it would just be so good for that and I'm I'm excited for like whatever however long they last what however like I hope it lasts for like mo- longer because like I'm enjoying it and it's nice mm-hmm. and I've been re liking reading all the like the fix seeing all like the edits seeing all the videos so, people put together the <laughs> first day that i so this was probably like a maybe a week after four had aired episode four i remember going on a3 i'm like i'm just gonna see what's out there there was 237 fix already in the buck tommy tag i just mm-hmm. went on there this people morning, were fast yeah they and do. there was like there was like <laughs> 1200 I was like, in like less than two weeks, there's like another eight hundred and some stories. I was like, y'all are working fast, but I love it. I and know. I've already contributed exactly. I know. I read what it is. Bot is really bad. Did you read that? Yeah, yeah oh, I, love, I, love I loved it. it. Thank you. <laughs> um, now we we I feel like we need to subtract a, a few hundred from that number because a fair amount of them are using Tommy as a stepping stone to yeah. Buddy. I can't stand um, which that. I have I personally filter it out I filter out pre-relationship buddy I filter out buddy as far as Tommy tag goes because yes I've always loved buddy that's not necessarily going away even though I have some houses with fans right now but it's a whole other thing we're not right. going to go into that um but I am enjoying Buck Tommy for as long as they last and I honestly I'm not going to be mad if they're in game right now I'm loving them so much so I like having my Buck Tommy fix and just them having, you know, their dedicated space in the fandom. I love it. Yeah, I mean, I of course, I would love to see Buck and Eddie, you know, together, you know, as Endgame. And we, you know, obviously haven't gotten confirmation as to how many more episodes Lou's going to be in. I know he's possibly going to be in seven and eight. Um, I think I they said he's in nine because I just saw something okay. this morning from nine one PTS, which is like one of my favorite pages to look at for like any like behind the scenes yeah. stuff because like I'm able to find things like pretty quickly on my own, but I love like the pages that literally dedicate their time yeah. to like posting about like everything that's that's like coming up like behind the scenes wise. Like I know there was a specific one that they posted that. Lou was filming with like Jennifer, Oliver, and a couple other people. I can't remember exactly who. Guys, I'm um, so looking forward to Maddie and Tommy meeting. Me too. Yes. I'm so excited. I'm, really excited. For this. I'm so excited. Like, so at least, for, and I know, like, so, like, at least for this season, I know he'll be like, I, at least in one or two more episodes i know probably not seven actually i know oliver said that he didn't think he was in seven or eight since those were bobby centric episodes 
So at least we have a chance for like nine definitely, but ten possible as a possibility too. And I know Lou yeah. was like even talking, like obviously they know nothing about season eight, but he was like talking about like it being open for season eight. So I think he could have like huge potential to come back and I hope he does. Well, season eight is coming out in the fall, correct? I thought I heard something we, off. We're sp- we're suspecting that it does, but yeah. obviously you never couldn't of what's gonna happen like they don't they don't even know like everything i, would... I wasn't sure if that had been confirmed yet since we already knew they were, were were new like we're not waiting we're not waiting on news of a season eight like season eight is happening yeah right. well only just because they don't they don't usually put out the like fall schedule until like mm, the, sometime in the summer yeah especially since like obviously like they haven't even wrapped filming this season right yeah mm-hmm. i'm imagining probably like mid to late may is the earliest we're gonna hear like dates for the fall yeah probably. and that would line up with season seven indie yeah so. yeah for sure but yeah i'm ex- i'm excited for whatever we get and stuff also i i need that i need i need scenes of them texting each other as they're going to work and stuff like that i just need little i just I need, need like, little domestic yes scenes. little things i need it then i had to put little josh in here yes i love it uh so this is like the constant thing that anytime we talk about what we want it's like josh um well, first of all, we want more of him, which I know we've been getting more of him since he's, like, basically, essentially, like, the boss of the call center. Like, I know Sue still mm-hmm. is there, but, like, we, like, I know we're going to see her in this, in episode six, but, like, essentially, she's, like, never there. So, like, I don't know. I'm excited. Like, I want to see him more just in general. And then... We've been literally talking about this for seasons. Can but can we like please finally see him like happily date? Like, I just please. I want all of the relationships and like we want Josh to be happy. Like I love Josh. Like he's probably like one of my favorite like side characters that we have. Oh, absolutely. He's like, one of my always favorite. has been. Like I love him and I just want more of him. Like I and. There's just so much potential, and we need just need to see more of them. That's all I ask. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm definitely looking forward just because I've seen at least one still with him at the wedding, or him chasing Maddie with her wedding dress, kind of still. Yeah, we're like walking in the call center. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was good. He's like runaway bride. No runaway. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I I I love Josh. I would also love to see like maybe like josh and a date going out with a double date for like uh with tevin because like after what happened the last time josh was kind of dating that didn't go so hot so yeah i've been on a date at one table josh and his date on a date at another table i hear about people doing this they'll like schedule the dates at the same place at the same time because they're Mm -hmm. not like because they still want like do Privacy, have that separate yeah. but like they also like just want to be there just in case like you know something goes sideways right yeah, yeah no, i feel really like good. i could see josh doing that oh for sure yeah i would love to see josh's reaction to buck oh my gosh please like how did I he know. take that like i'm sure maddie would tell him i don't think she'd do that because that's outing buck unless he gave True. her permission True. to um uh, but if he gave her permission, like, then that'd be, yeah, that'd be cute. And if not, then, like, I don't know. Maybe it's just, like, at the wedding, like, everyone maybe forgot to tell Josh, and then Tommy rolls up, and he's like, wait, what? Well, you know, that would even be better, because, yeah, yeah, like, that would even be better, because, like, it's, like, and Josh was just, like, well, something has changed here. Or, like, that's right. new information to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, we love that. And then, Henren, yes. like I don't yes. have much again, but I'm really excited for like their storyline. I want to see like more of them. Like I'm, it's kind of hard because we only like obviously it's shorter season, so they can't like give a, give the all for everybody. But I'm excited for like their 
potential adoption storyline with Mara, yeah. seeing more of them with Mara, seeing like their little family grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, especially before Denny gets any much any older and you know, he because he's how old is he now? Do we even have an age for Denny? He's about the same age as Christopher, I'm that's pretty sure. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I don't know exactly how old he is. He might not be exactly 13. We know Chris is 13. He might be, I feel like he's in between Christopher and Harry, so he might be 14. Maybe. I, I don't honestly know. I feel, yeah, I feel like around, around there, yeah, like 13, 14. Yeah. He doesn't like based on the scenes we've gotten, he doesn't seem that old, but like he is. <laughs> well, he's definitely grown up since we first saw him. Well, yeah, but like obviously, but like yeah. it's also like kind of the like us watching this show and then it's like, oh, Christopher is like 13. That's wild. I know. When we first saw him, he was seven. I know. Oh my god. Especially since, like, Gavin is, is like, oh you know, gosh, yeah. obviously older. Well, obviously Chris is older. Gavin's going to be older. But, like, mm-hmm. what I mean is, like, Gavin was so, like, little when he first started the show. I know. And now he's, he's, he's like, so, so He's getting so tall. And, like, even to see him um next to the twins that play G, um... Like, it's so crazy, and, like, seeing right? him in, like, behind-the-scenes stuff, interacting with them, it's, like, it's so cute. Yeah. I love it. It makes my heart so happy. Um, But, yeah, I think that's, I think that's pretty much everything I have for everyone. I'm sure there will be more things <clears throat> that'll come up when we get, yeah. like, obviously this episode, mm-hmm. and then, like, the last few. There's always little yeah. things that come up. Oh, yeah. and I, Yeah, and I feel like we touched on quite a few of the characters, and I just overall, I want to see more emergencies, and um, I would love to see, like, a helicopter emergency now that Tommy is a part of the show and see him involved some way. Um, yeah, for sure. I like, I like when shows do that, like, when they mm-hmm. do, like, they do have, like, side partnerships, and then we see mm-hmm. their, like, almost point of view. I do like that. Yeah, yeah for sure and as for the madney wedding i know there's like not too much out there like there's a few pictures there have been like things that have been talked about i don't really have too much like all we really have to go off of is like the one or two details we've heard the few pictures we've seen the promo and like that's it like i i know when the promo came out like everyone was like talking about like somebody standing high behind him being like oh my god it's tommy i'm like guys it is not tommy and like i know sometimes like i deny everything anybody says but like i actually mm-hmm. mean this this time like it is not tommy because a that doesn't make sense b lou had basically said that like no chim and tommy like the things that happen like it's good they're on good terms like nothing is happening there you can't get with people that are saying that he's that tommy kidnapped chim like what the hell man also like if you look at that guy the build you can only see his legs but you can tell the build is different right yeah (laughs) even if it was tommy maybe he's there to rescue chim like well, just, that could be him just appearing like well just context wise and i know they could piece things together but it literally doesn't seem that way because chip is crawling being like i'm supposed to be somewhere and this guy is just standing behind him yeah so like context wise probably not but probably yeah not but, yeah but i mean like, they the hints have gone the hints are so pointing towards tommy being the one to rescue chim which i would love especially since Chim right. rescued Tommy in season two. Yeah, you know, that was my thing. Found. That was my thing. Like, I was thinking because of, like, all the callbacks we're getting. And I know, like, I know, like, we're talking about so many callbacks. And there are a lot. And not everything is going to be a callback. But, like, I specifically think that, like, Tommy should save Chim. And not Plus, even that he should. That he's he will. He's dramatic entrance. Like, he's making mm-hmm. a dramatic entrance into the wedding. That's confirmed. And like, oh what, yeah, yeah, what, I'm excited for that. 
Mm-hmm. Like, what's more dramatic than him rescuing the broom? <laughs> um, him showing up with the helicopter, um, stepping out, Buck's yeah. there, Buck kisses him, like, oh! Yes. <laughs> I need it. I need I'm it all. I'm down for that. I'm down for that. Like, I'm here for it. I'm here for, like, I'm here for, like, everything. <laughs> no, and I, I, you know what? I something I really want to see, and I don't know if we've talked about it. I want to see Buck being treated well. Like he's always had to be the one to like take the girls out on the date, do the big gestures. I want Tommy to do that for him. Oh like, hell yeah! Make him realize he's worth it. Um, we don't like it's it's not seen that often, and I feel like Buck has gone through a lot in his previous relationships. This would be nice for him to be treated well and like be the one wooed, I guess you could say. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. No, I agree yeah. on that one. It's also like I've seen it good points about like how Buck's <sighs> always tried to like take care of people in his last relationships, like be there for people and no one's ever mm-hmm. let him. So like mm-hmm. I kind of I kind of want to see both of them kind of just have their walls broken down just like a little bit, like taking care of each other um and like you know of course we want to see buck wooed we want to see mm-hmm. um, him actually get an idea even there regardless of gender but like have an idea of what a healthier relationship looks like fair fair request i think we're due seven seasons in <laughs> so i <about> agree right. <laughs> yeah for sure yeah i definitely and, yeah And these last, like, the last few weeks to the hiatus have really, like, there's been a lot between the interviews of, like, different people. Like, I know mostly Oliver and Lou, but then, like, the social media posts and the, um, I, I I still, I'm giving props to the PR team. (laughs) They're doing a great job. Yeah, they are. They're They're keeping us fed. They are. They're, and they know what they're doing right and it's just sense. like you are you yes you get a race you all get a race <laughs> right um but yeah i'm excited for what's coming and i um i appreciate that the pr team is doing their job well i do want to talk about i think these are mostly fan theories there's just like three of them which i think are interesting Love like that. very simply buck and tommy become a couple like i think we all think that's going in that direction and then somebody said Madney switches the wedding back to their house, which I thought was very interesting. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, yeah, because maybe we don't know, like, obviously we know the wedding is likely not going to happen, like, with Tim being missing, like, that day. Because, mm-hmm. like, you know, so maybe there has to be, like, last minute switches. That's interesting. And then... I have a theory that whether or not Tommy will stay as regular, kind of like Karen in and out of episodes, or if he will get killed off, which literally hurts my heart. Like, let's not go there. Let's um, not put it there. I know we've too- talked about it before, but let's not put it out there. It's like too soon, yeah. too soon. <laughs> and they, not- men- they mentioned, like, I can't bear to see another one of Buck's romantic relationships to suffer. I don't want to see what happened on... Hawkami on Chicago Fire, Fire that reference like literally when the, I read this the other day I was like that sunk my heart because like <laughs> that was probably the last show that I watched that had like a really terrible character death and I was just like sobbing on the floor yeah so, uh which character so it's a ship they were talking about but oh okay yeah yeah it's a ship, but like it was a character died, and it was just like terrible. But yeah, that's, that's all of that. But it's very interesting. I love hearing the different theories people have, or just the the things to say. I saw this video last night, and I thought it was very interesting. Something I never thought about, but somebody was like, "Isn't it wild that like within the one eighteen, there are people that work there that do not have that relationship with Bobby." where they are not invited to the what 18 handouts hangouts on bobby's patio with athena like they are just co-workers and i thought that was mm-hmm. so interesting i was just like yeah man i've never thought about that uh before mm-hmm. like yeah I, I have thought occasionally about it 
I, I, yeah, I have too. And I've also thought about that with the 126 too, because you can always see the people in the background, like oh, yeah. wearing the shirts and stuff. So I always think about that. I'm like, there's other people that work at the station besides the main crew. <laughs> I was right. Like, and those people are people like are mostly all like off duty firefighters and first responders just in general. Well, yeah. there's. But there's admin staff and there's other. Oh well, yeah, that, but like, also, like especially in the art, if you look at the, especially some of the begins episodes, like there are two different tables for people to eat at, like in the yeah. loft area of the oh, station. That's right. Like, it's yeah. it takes a larger team than like five people. Yeah. To firefighter chef, so they're going to be, and we can't bring in everybody. So there are always going to be people in the background. Um. So now I want to talk about the interviews because, like, we've been fed, yeah. <laughs> like, definitely... and it's been nice to like dive into these interviews and like I've just been loving what we've been getting because I've even noticed like previously like Oliver like post things and then delete them, and recently I've noticed that Oliver is just like even more active and I feel like this has just been like a good change like and stuff just to see that like obviously like I feel like just better things are coming for Buck and like Mm -hmm. he's more excited about the storyline that's actively happening which makes me so happy and it's just been great to see like this amount of like media coverage for Oliver um so he he had yeah so he had like that interview with Zach Sang which it was like an hour long interview, which was like great. Um, and I thought it was interesting. Like he mentioned how like Stark is actually his grandma's last name. Mm-hmm. I thought yeah. that was so interesting. Yeah, he chose it because in in London the um, or the London uh, arts group. I can't think of it, SAG, but it's yeah. their version. Um, you couldn't have the same actor, and there was already an Oliver Jones. Well, so. yeah it's like yeah. that here too like it's like that everywhere yeah. like because like he explained it like oh so like you don't want your money to accidentally be going to somebody else right yeah which makes um, sense you definitely don't want any confusion so um it's just like us having a social security a number here in the states like everyone has a different one and um no two are the same so yeah i i really like as like so officially his name is oliver leon jones but he's using Stark as his stage name and he didn't want to change his first name, which I like. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, yeah, that would be so, like he said that would be so weird to like change mm-hmm. your first name because if you change your last name, it's like no big deal. Right. It's kind of like when people go by like their first and middle name like publicly, mm-hmm. but then like they have their last name private, which, yeah, like that, it's kind of like that. Mm-hmm. And, and us, some of us authors do the same thing, like, you know, I'm going by EJ Fredrickson as my author name, but I'm also EJ stands for something. Um, right. <laughs> I just am choosing not to use that as a public thing, but um, and yeah, I don't know. I, I really liked that interview. I only watched parts of it. I didn't get to watch the whole thing. I've um, only seen clips. I so what watched. all? What other details did you get out of it, Katie? I have I have a lot of notes, guys. Um, okay. He always gets that his accent is very like unique. Like people often misunder misunderstand. Like think his accent is like yes, it's British, but he also gets South South African a lot. Which really, it's very interesting. Yes. Um, well, also British accents vary quite a bit too. Yeah, especially yeah, they do. Regions of even of London have different um, yeah tones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also, like, uh, my great-grandmother was um, from England, and so, like, her accent, after have living here for so many years, like, she still had it a little bit, um, but, like, it alters, and I think he talks about that, especially, like, using an American accent, but, like, obviously it's altered in some way, mm-hmm. and... He talks about when he came here in 2016, he did come here for a girl, but he talks about how when he first came here, 
he would go to coffee shops, speak in an American accent, just see, like, what would happen with girls, and see, like, like, if, because if he went there talking to British accent, I feel like girls would just be like, oh my god, oh my god. But he wanted to see, like, you know, what was there first before, like, see if he would be questioned for, like, the American accent, which also I feel like kind of plays into the acting. Mm -hmm. And he also mentioned that, like, He's never really used, even when he did shows in the UK, that he never really, he never really used his true accent. He it was always always altered, like a little bit, which I think is well. That makes sense. Depending on the character you're playing, you might have to change your dialect or your tone. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. even just like people here in the US, like somebody who's from Texas, who's playing who's not playing a texas character you kind of have to work on getting rid of that drawl um, yeah yeah that's also like that's also like that where i live in like new york because people mm-hmm. live, that live in northern have like a different accent from you know people that obviously even when i live in like central like our accent is like different and mm-hmm. there's even people here that like people that live in more countryside that have like more of a country accent Mm-hmm. or just it's also funny because where like i live like you could go in pennsylvania and people know where exactly where you're from which i think is weird <laughs> because it's i don't know like it's a we it's like a common thing that like if you go to certain places they're like oh you're from here and we're like how do you know and they're like oh yeah you talk like i guess we talk fast i don't i don't know i've heard that before <laughs> well even where i'm at in maryland it's like you have Especially since, like, being near the nation's capital and having a lot of people that had to relocate. Right. Um, it's, we have a whole different thing, but, like, even, like, a county, an hour, an hour south of where I live right now has a lot more southern accents in it than mm-hmm. where I live now. Um, and Maryland's interesting like that because it's sort of, it's kind of south. It's sort of not, but it kind of is. And you'll find that absolutely reflected wherever you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. <clears throat> um, and then the idea of 901 lasting like 20 seasons was um, brought up just because that's like how like these procedurals are working these days. Mm-hmm. And um, like I could totally see the show lasting a long time. And then, you know, maybe like Buck's captain, Bobby's retired at Athena, and Bobby's roles like shift. <laughs> Oh, I would love to see Captain Buck. Yeah, I know. We already like, love. I would Clifford love Captain Buck. Hen before Captain Buck, though. Yes. Like, if someone was going to take over as Captain, I would want Hen to. But eventually, Captain Buck. Hell yeah. Yeah. We also don't know where like anybody would be. Yeah. At this yeah. point, so like, who knows? Maybe Hen would be doing like a different job somewhere else. We don't know. Maybe like, she how goes the... back to medical school. Yeah, we don't know where, like how how the show would shift, but I always. Well, and if you think about it, in the show, Chimneys became a firefighter in 2005. So 2024, if they're around the same year in the show, he's been a firefighter for 19 years. So he could easily be close to retirement, too. (laughs) That's true. Yeah. Yeah, I like, it's funny because in Grace and Ed, we... The guy that's the chief of the whole hospital yeah. in season one, he is talking about retiring. Now we're on like season twenty, season, <laughs> yeah, season twenty, and he yeah. is still working and not retired. Yeah. And I'm like, but in other shows there. I've watched, the captain has eventually retired, which makes the show more realistic. Right. Like, so I would like to see something like that. Like, if we do get that long, which I. I see the potential, and I know a lot of people have said this, like, they see the potential of, like, things lasting longer than they probably would have in the past, and like, there's we already have, like, the groundwork for everything, which is really that's mm-hmm. cool. And then yeah. the idea of, like, could the 100th episode existed on Fox, and Oliver's like, wait, and, like, what, 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 in what capacity, like, what do you mean? And, like, his sto- like historic wise because of like the the same sex kiss oliver is like oh i don't know and he said how like tim wasn't obviously working on 
911 for five seasons five and six because he was working on Lone Star and now Tim is back and he said how he wants to write the show he wants to write which you can definitely tell mm-hmm. the show it's that, already like, different yeah yeah like he was he was like still the sh- like co-showrunner so he was like he was bringing up like storylines but he wasn't like writing like episode to episode he wasn't stuff. really at the helm and we felt it that's why yeah. we almost lost it was because of yeah. many reasons but the nine one started to go down a little bit mm-hmm. yeah you could definitely you can definitely tell the difference of the tone between five and six and then seven and like i think network has like has partially has plays part of it of it yeah. but also you can tell like writing and that kind of s- stuff like how things have changed so mm-hmm. honestly i do think that like plays a role in it and um oliver was talking about how watching the show back like seasons ago how he could like if you watch it back like now from like the start how he can see like by buck more and he says how Buck was looking for something. He just didn't know what it was. And I mm-hmm. love the idea of that being brought up. Because, like, that was obviously, like, very apparent. Even when Eddie came in, like, mm-hmm. Buck was looking for something. Whether yeah. if, whether seasons later, if that develops or not. Like, he was looking for a lot of things. Mm-hmm. He was looking to belong. And yeah. belonging can look like a relationship. Or whatever he was looking for a family and whether we ever get romantic buddy or just platonic buddy he mm-hmm. got that in the buckley diaz as well as the 118 um but also like after a while you start just realizing something's just continually missing yeah um and that's what happened with him was he realized he was queer right because um, you always you always know something's not quite right not uh, not 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 quite right um not not the way you think it is you have mm-hmm. you, you know that there's just something different about you but you sometimes don't realize it for a while yeah right um and then oliver talks about like their response to my book and how it's been incredible how like firefighters have mentioned uh messaged him and said like oh i'm not like out yet but seeing this portrayal of buck is like huge which I think is very important yeah. and like that's great that he's gotten to have like like yeah. read about that from people <laughs> I love that this was brought up but Oliver was asked about like what was Buck looking for with Abby and like the idea of that relationship being weird was brought up and let me just say like he was going through this phase and I think Oliver even was like yeah he was going through something back then and I right. like, and Oliver says, you know, it was, like, rare to see that played opposite because usually it's, like, the guy being older and then the woman being younger is played a lot in media. So it was it was interesting to see, like, um, it played the opposite way around. And, yeah, a lot of people are like, that was weird. And, yeah, parts of it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. And... Oliver had mentioned like Tim is quite collaborative like Tim asked him if he was okay with the storyline like going this way for Buck and Oliver said like yes like and he like I think it's cool like how collaborative we've, we've seen this not even just on 911 but on Lone Star like how collaborative or um like things are which I like yeah like a lot well, like from what I saw Oliver had also said that he had been kind of planning to go in playing Buck as her before mm-hmm. Ryan approached him. Uh, not, uh, Tim. Uh, Tim approached him, and then he was like, "Good, because I was going to do that anyway." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, that was mentioned. Yeah, and then Oliver said how he knew Buck, Buck before he even got the park. So it was like, when did you realize? like you knew buck and oliver's like oh i knew him before i got the part he like read it and then he was like yeah i know this guy (laughs) which i think is funny and then Mm -hmm. oliver mentioned how and he's like yeah angela exposed me on a red 
carpet saying that the kiss didn't really feel anything different it was just it was just a kiss like you have your eyes closed it all feels the same <laughs> he's like yeah she exposed me <laughs> and i thought that was very funny um yeah i love how oliver loves his character too i know his I love-, love for buck makes me love buck yes even more uh, even yeah mm-hmm. even more so because i it's there are times that you have actors who come in and they play a character and they're like yep i played a character and it's not a big deal to them and other times you have them falling in love with their characters and that's when you start seeing a difference in the character in a yeah. good way because yeah, you can well, see that the character is loved yeah and like also like i feel like when you're watching a show you can tell if an actor is passionate about their character and whether if they're not because like I feel like you can tell just because like I'm not going to be into a show if I feel like you're not like you can tell if you're not into it like especially even like chemistry wise if like you can tell like a ship like that off screen like if there's no chemistry or like that they don't like each other it like you can see through everything Mm -hmm. so like yeah that would just make the show like not interesting for sure um and then Oliver said how he doesn't how he doesn't understand when people say the show isn't for me anymore like those kind of comments and he's like they've always had queer characters in the show I mean the first episode is Michael coming out to Athena Michael and David Mm -hmm. Hen and Karen Josh Oliver's like why why are you even watching to begin with (laughs) oh just calling that out yes I love it (laughs) so love that yeah because like the show was queer from day one and if you're not Mm -hmm. seeing that then I don't know what to tell you (laughs) it's only because it's only because it's now the hot guy that everyone's been projection crushing on is now by which i love i love that because it doesn't mean he's not even attracted to women anymore which is what people are acting like um and that's something a lot of multisexual people suffer with is people thinking oh you you know you're either either you're gonna cheat or you're gonna you're like you can't choose or for some people that's like oh you're attracted to the same sex as well as opposite sex oh that's off-putting because i'm a homophobic little twat um it's so it's so it's just it's honestly ridiculous yeah it is and i love um oliver being like well if people don't don't want to if people want to stop watching the show then okay we're already renewed for season eight go watch something else (laughs) like i love that quote so much i'm just like go on and um Oliver said that how he had the most fun filming the tsunami. They actually filmed it in Mexico because they had mm-hmm. these like huge water tanks. So they built the Santa they Monica Pier. Tit- yeah, they used it and, for the Titanic movie. Yes, that was brought up too. Um, and it looked like it went on forever, which is super cool. And then he talked about being a vegan for like eight years, which that's great. Good for you. I um, thought he was a vegan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because he, he's like, yeah, because I'm such an animal lover. What I loved with him, like this spring brought up, is he says, like, oh, I never push any that on anyone. Everyone can do what they want. And forcing people can push them further. Which I think is definitely true. Because there's those people sure. who are, whether it's vegetarian, vegan, whatever it may be. Like, some people are like, you have to. Like, you're just killing animals. You're just, like, terrible. And I'm like, first of all, not, like not everyone dietary dietary wise can like cut out meat or animal product whatever whatever however you want to put it not everyone can do that because some people like need certain things dietary wise also not everyone wants to like cut out everything that i could see myself like being like sort of vegetarian but i could never like cut everything out yeah like that's hard but like i love him like saying like i never pushed that on anyone because there's definitely people Mm -hmm. that do and it's like yeah we all have like things that we need or that like we need to like maintain our health and like that's just how it is right Um, well in my experience if you're doing it for reasons if you're only doing it performatively then that's when you're pushy but if you're doing it for like honest reasons then you're just you're 
happy maintaining your own diet and that's what's happening here like you know mm-hmm. and you know good for good for Oliver yeah because even like if you're pushy and you're like oh I love animals and I'm like well then do you use things that aren't tested on animals too because then you really don't really right. love animals like I could go there with that that's yeah. always my thing too Mm -hmm. um and then like he was asked about like a tragedy they did that seemed like too real and oliver said the one that got to him was in like either season two or three i think it was season two um the horse dying and i'm like yep same oliver same yeah Yeah, Yeah. like i forgot i I like that one i forgot about like that scene until he was talking about it and he was saying how like moving it was and seeing like watching that he like he was like i didn't know if i was gonna be able to cover recover from it because it was so sad and i'm like yeah, yeah we've all cried to that uh, at some point i, I was do every time mess every time i see that scene uh that's i can literally one. never watch that scene because Anytime. i cannot handle animal death of any kind on screen and that is like anytime you know. i see a video come up about somebody talking about their pet dying i literally start sobbing sobbing or anything i have to do animals will literally i could cry it could be a happy video and i'd start crying that's just how Mm -hmm. i am like um and then like (laughs) i love that this is always brought up when somebody plays a first responder but somebody was like how often do you feel like a real fault firefighter and oliver's like um never especially when he sees the real ones and he's like they're so cool and they're like so strong and here i am right and I, yeah i, I think love- i saw the clip of that one and I, he's like yeah like he met someone and his hands was like huge and he's like man he could carry me. <laughs> i know and he's like they they're like probably like oh you're such a phony you and he's like i see them like pull up to the grocery store and oliver goes yeah yeah they they could they i forget something about like yeah. like they they could save me right just, yeah like yeah um, in my line of work you know i i have clients that you know sometimes i need to send them to the hospital or they follow me to call the paramedics to have them come help them and there's recently i have had a situation where two different times the same crew was on when I had to call and there's this one guy I swear to god he's a brunette version of fuck like he's tall <laughs> got the brown oh hair god. the curls I was like he's oh. he's built like Oliver I was like oh my god that's like real life fuck <laughs> yeah and like Oliver says like you know in a real emergency I would be pretty useless and I feel like that's like I love um, the humbleness honestly yeah yes. I like I like gotta the humbleness be. like because there's definitely people where they probably let that go to their head and like oh, I yeah. can do this no you can't right no you yeah, can't, the fuck you can't. <laughs> I think on the surface everyone could do a little bit of something but yeah I feel like okay. anyone who works as in the, as a first responder on tv as an actor has had some training but not the training that true firefighters go through and I'm glad when they acknowledge that well, it takes a while to get trained. There's reasons why it's like months long training, and then you go through mm-hmm. the fire academy. Yeah, you like you go through enough training, sure, and sometimes that doesn't even happen. But like you yeah. know, for the actual maneuvers, not to mention like the show is only just like a small percentage of what first first responders actually deal with, and I've had oh, like yeah. friends yeah. who are like first responders that are like yeah you learn that real fast and oh yeah for sure yeah and i love him mentioning like how like background actors on the show they're like there's a reason why they're mostly all older is because they're retired and they are actually like um firefighters first responders like um and stuff which i've seen them so many different shows like that's why I say that, like, the, for the most part, their mo- the background actors are, like, off-duty or retired firefighters just because, like, when they're going into, like, these, like, calls, like, they need the actual, and it's also good for them because, like, they can ask them, like, any questions that they have, like, oh, like, if you were doing this, like, what would you do? And, like, that mm-hmm. kind of stuff, which I think is so, mm-hmm. that's so cool. Um, 
and Oliver says how about he was talking about his like birthmark and how he has never had to like cover it for a role, which I think is really cool. Yeah. yeah. Especially since like he can bring that into like any character he plays. Mm-hmm. And stuff. And like it's it's cool. It's also like he said how like he has gotten like when he first did nine one, like he would get like um like DMs or whatever from people that like their kids had facial birthmarks and he's like yeah mine mm-hmm. is like this little thing and theirs was like their half of their face and he's like I felt mm-hmm. like a fraud mm-hmm. because like they'd be like you gave my kid confidence and he's like yeah here's my little thing and yours is like half of your face yeah but that's oh. so at least cool and then mm-hmm. like oh Oliver was like based on like a past like show or whatever he did he was like so this is what's gonna happen with 9 I'm we're gonna finish like filming season one we'll get renewed for season two and then I'll get killed off because mm-hmm. <laughs> he got killed off from something else he did and he was just like yeah that's what I was thinking and I'm like can you oh. imagine yeah his character I think was killed off in the end of second season of Into the Badlands Yeah, um, I started watching season one and it was very interesting to see him but i don't think i could get through more than like the first few episodes it was very i might have to go back and watch it again i think it was like for the type of series i like with the dystopian kind of apocalyptic stuff i think i would get into it but at the time i think i just didn't have the time to it and i think it's on netflix or it was so i might have to find it again right yeah yeah he was like yeah plus my character was kind of like you know like he he also he also said that like you know the way he played if he was playing like that character now things would have been a lot different he has he also has like he also thinks that like that's how things worked out because of how like he could have did it like a lot differently like a lot put more into it now because he was just like very like nervous at the time like because that was like one of the first things he ever did yeah and then yeah he's definitely grown as an actor Oh, for sure. Which is, it's so cool to see, even from, like, 9-1, from, like, the start. Mm-hmm. And now, like, it's so cool to see, like, see Buck grow up. Even Oliver grow up. Like, I know he was, like, very much a full-fledged adult, but, like, just seeing him grow through the show is cool, too. Um, yeah. And he, and Buddy was mentioned, and he says how he's, like, open to it. There's obviously stuff there. And there's chemistry with them. It it goes, if it goes there, Oliver says, like, it works two ways. He sees it as, like, a potential story. He doesn't know, like, what's going to happen with Eddie's character. Who knows? But uh, Oliver also thinks you have to tread carefully because you don't want, like, guy comes out and then all his male friends are like, so what, what you got a crush on me? He just wants to be yeah. careful telling that all at the same time which i definitely agree with right. like that's why i've always said like if we get there we have like a lot of work to do and like mm-hmm. you don't really know how the- they have like a lot to work on and that's why like with buck like we're going in like a step in the right direction and like yeah it's gonna take a lot of work but you know you don't know and it's nice to see that like they're oh they're open to it and like that they see it like i know oliver's like yeah i watch these like videos of like buck and eddie and then they have like this cool music on it and like we'll watch them and i know ryan and oliver said they send them back and forth to each other like hey look at this this is kind of cool i believe he's also said they read fanfics and that's made me scared (laughs) no can you imagine if like they just pulled up one of your fics and you're like considering that my most popular one is what i never want them to read no just yeah. no i don't I, have I any uh buddy fix on my repertoire so i think i'm pretty safe but <laughs> otherwise i know my friend and i were talking about that last night because i started writing some tarlos fiction and then my friend and i started diving into writing co-writing stuff and we have so many buddy stuff but it's like abort abort <laughs> abort mission abort mission <laughs> i was like doing you could you imagine if they read ours I would love them to read ours, though. I, I would cool. love them to read ours, but it's it would be so it funny. Scary. Yeah, I understand I- that feeling because that was that's like me anytime I post any video, and I'm like, yeah. totally freaking out, and I'm like, 
I think it's cool when they see it, but it's also like there's some things where I'm just like, yeah. this is our like private little club, and you can't cross the picket right. line. Well, and I think you know that goes back to like when I first started getting into the fandom world and the fan fiction and stuff. There was like you know the whole like don't first rule of Fight Club is not to talk about Fight Club. The first yeah. rule of fandoms is you don't send your fan fiction to the off the actors who are in you know playing the characters. So to just know that they're involved enough or aware enough to see that is pretty awesome mm-hmm. but yeah but it's like I'm I'm happy because again they see things differently and I know that Oliver has even said like some of the buddy edits are like amazing like some of the fan vids <laughs> um, yeah and I'm like there That's are some really good ones out there the fans work yeah like he I know he's been like liking a lot of like Tommy edits mm-hmm. like a bunch of Eddie edits. Oh yeah, I've yeah. seen that. I've seen people be like, oh my god, Oliver liked this, which I think is cool because like they're interacting with the fans, even if it's just like liking things that people are putting out there. Like I just like the engagement because I feel like in the past we haven't got like a ton of engagement with the cast. Um, We've gotten so much more engagement in the past with the Lone Star cast. Yeah, than, like, exactly. Mm-hmm. So I'm loving this. I feel like just overall, there's just this sense of freedom now. Right. And so, yeah, it's it's good. But it is a little bit different because they haven't been able to before. Right, yeah. And Oliver, of course, gets asked like a lot like about Buddy and he doesn't obviously know the answer or like how to answer it well. Mm-hmm. Um, not like that the question not like the question of like um like it's not ever like if it's gonna happen it's like when it's gonna happen Oliver's like I don't know and Oliver is like open to it if Tim goes there but he like doesn't know and it's just like I honestly as a fan especially having like a more public platform Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm always asked questions about things and I'm like guys I wish I was cool enough to like know things before time but like I literally Mm -hmm. I do not I do not know things before they happen like I haven't gotten a while but I used to get it like every single week for like Lone Star and it got like Mm -hmm. not that I didn't like it but like it got kind of old because I'm just like I literally have no insight like I think it's funny like I would laugh about it I'm like I think it's funny how everyone thinks that like I just have this insight and and I would make jokes about it I'm like yep I'm texting in the cast right now as we speak just trying to get that little insight so I can make a video about it I think it's also interesting because I personally think everyone needs to, like, especially interviewers, need to stop asking about Buddy. Because what I've seen online is that people are taking Oliver not shooting it down completely as word of law that it's going to happen. And first of all, we gotta remember, he doesn't want to alienate fans, so he's never going mm-hmm. to say that it's not going to happen. And also, he right. doesn't know. Yeah, he's, he's just an actor. He's asked he can't say no he can't say yes it puts yeah. him in a weird position and also this happens mm-hmm. in so many interviews i'm like mm-hmm. Calm down yeah yeah although Calm down. Like, although they haven't really been i think now is like the first time where they're more publicly be asking it and also like people are people are interviewing them asking them as like fans of buddy and I don't know in these interviews like they're asking about it but they're not like being pushy about it which I feel like I've seen definitely or felt like in times where people were more pushy about it so it's just like more low-key so I didn't like I didn't mind it and like I feel like if it wasn't brought up in any of these interviews I feel like it was going to be brought up at some point and yeah. I feel like as long as he addresses brought it up in now, all the- kind of my point is that it's kind of brought up in all so it's like yeah yeah which so, granted like they're all probably interviewing him at the same time so they don't know yeah. what's being asked yeah fair yeah um yeah and i feel like too like at the beginning of the season we had a lot of ryan and oliver content which was definitely then the two of them together it made it easy for people to ask about buddy which then started a trend of stuff um which has continued which i'm i'm all for and i just i know that oliver ryan lou no one none of them have control over what happens with their characters they're just there to play them 
and love them if they do love their characters and sure of course as a fan of the show they have their own thoughts and desires and hopes for the characters but that may not happen and that's going to be up to Tim Maneer and the showrunners and the writers to come up with hopefully you know I know that there's been comments like Oliver said the fans are not wrong <laughs> in some ways so like we may be working our way towards something I don't know yeah but right yeah. now I'm happy with Tommy and Buck I that's my Tom thing I loved, yeah. yeah like I'm I'll take it. I'm very happy with that and I at least like them acknowledging it because you know if they didn't if it wasn't brought up now, it was going to be brought up later. So it's better just to like get it out there right now. Mm, maybe, yeah. Yeah. I, don't know, I think either way, you know, they're out here doing the Lord's work. <laughs> they really are. That. Like, right. yeah. And that interview was only like the start. Like, so we got that one. And then there was like a, so that one was like about like an hour. And then the next one mm -hmm. was like 14 minutes. Um, and I only really noted a few things about this one, not as much. Um, so, like, Oliver mentioned, like, just being proud to tell Buck's story and, like, the response and stuff. And then, like, I forget, like, what the actual question was, but, like, whoever was interviewing him for, like, this one, this is, like, the Gay Times interview, which I know mm -hmm. they also had, like, an article interview, which was the same as the video one. I just watched the video one. Mm -hmm. um because it was a lot easier and also i just wanted to hear his response and like it was like bisexual bicon buck and oliver's like i like that bisexual bicon buck i like that and he was like asked if he thought like the storyline was possible for buck and oliver mentions how it was brought up like a few years ago but then it was shut mm -hmm. down higher up and oliver decided that like this year he wanted to explore that and like Tim was already like thinking that anyways like that was already where the storyline was gonna go and he mm -hmm. and stuff which I think is I think is super cool and I, I my thought of it like being brought up previously is I when they say higher ups that was definitely like Fox yes mm -hmm. there were other people that were that I know like publicly were like I don't see it like, Kristen, I know she was like, I don't see it. But, like, I also n I also have this, like, very, like, strong feeling that it was, like, higher-ups at Fox. For, like, a lot of different reasons that I won't get into. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah. um, I definitely get that vibe. And I know, like, a lot of people are, like, when we've posted things, we're like, why are you giving ABC so much credit? Okay, like, to be honest, like, yes, it's, like, Tim. He is running this show and mm -hmm. like this storyline but you got to remember that like it's not just like the showrunner that comes up with these storylines or that makes these storylines possible the network does play a role in that because if they don't want some storyline happening on their show mm -hmm. or on their network it's not going to happen right the network's always got to give the green light <clears throat> exactly yeah. and i yeah and i feel like from the vibe i'm getting is that end of season four or season early season five there was supposed to be something with buck and possibly eddie and fox shut it down and uh, yeah you know and if that's the case and they that's why we didn't get a lot of buck and eddie in season five and six because they had to change up some things at the last minute and they did but we still got some and i i'm one to not dwell in the past yeah mm -hmm. i agree so i feel like we've moved forward you know we had our time and now we're on a new network there's new network executives there's new people making decisions tim is back in the head kind of showrunners position and i feel like that's gonna be better for everyone um and I think it's going well so far. Yes, we're getting an abbreviated season, but that's unfortunately because of the writer's strike from last year. Yeah, it's not just 9-1. Everybody <laughs> right. is getting yeah. some form of a shorter season. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. not so. just us. Yeah, and like ABC is just doing so many things that Fox couldn't even do, even with a short season. Like, mm -hmm. like we're already renewed. And I don't yeah. think that's like, coincidence right 
at all. I mean, they've been the top running show every Thursday, I think, since it started airing. That's yes. huge, especially for, on it, a brand new network. Yeah, because yeah, because I think even we talked about the time with the switch. We were like, oh, we don't know how this is gonna go. Like, I definitely didn't think anything bad was going to happen to the show, but we we really didn't know how this was gonna translate ne- network to network. Well, I think ABC knew they were getting a successful show, and they were determined to make you know the very best of it, like to milk it, and they did, and they had an amazing show so far i know the rest of the season is going to be amazing because i have no reason to think otherwise um so yeah i mean yes of course it's not all the network but it is partially the network we've got to give abc some credit and i'm going to give them a fair amount of it agreed um i know we already mentioned like oliver saying like he doesn't think the body stands are wrong and mm-hmm. he also mentions like the subtle come outs for um fuck in like the next episode which i think is pretty cool and then that was pretty much all i had to comment on for that and then there were a few things i read from like a lou interview that i thought were interesting so he did this interview like i think right after five aired or it might have been after four i can't remember um, and he mentioned something about like Buck and Tommy and says something along the lines of like, but like Buddy Sands should like be all for this. So he said like basically what was communicated to me is because Tommy is a little older. Um, he's a little more experienced and he knows who he is. The funny thing about the fandom is you have you have to do something and not like it to know what you like. So what if mm-hmm. Buck? were to get with Eddie and not like it and that's that's all what if at least he could work out the kinks with Tommy so I'm like y'all should be all all for this and nothing yep. set in stone which I really liked him yeah. saying that because yeah. it's like I did think like even seasons ago when Buddy was just like like Buddy was like half of the fandom was like I don't know the other half was like oh, this is happening, and everyone came to, like, their conclusion of that at whatever point. I had thought, like, I kind of don't want them to be each other's first because, like, you, what yeah. if they're like, oh, I don't know. Because there could be, mm-hmm. like, that, oh, I don't know, and they don't know if it's because of the person or if it's because of them. Self-identity is messy. Yeah, mm-hmm. It's messy, yeah. and it's hard, especially coming out later, and if Eddie is confirmed to be queer at some point in time we already know he has a lot to go through and we don't know if their relationship would survive that would their relationship have survived the breakdown arc would there's so much that like even if tommy was on the picture and buddy had been given the green light earlier i don't know i'm thinking that if it happens it's happening exactly when it should be that's how yeah yeah, that's exactly Mm -hmm. how i feel and that is just like for each character I feel like there's more to work through so I feel like it's I feel like it honestly yeah it's happening like how it was meant to happen and also Buck deserves to sorry that was I interrupted you're you're good Buck deserves to have a relationship where he learns what it means to be appreciated yep yeah yeah that is that is like the theme you can't go off into from a series of bad relationships and know what it means to value yourself and value yourself in a relationship even if that is an in-game relationship but i don't know no matter what happens no matter what ship is in game he needs this experience and then i know that i've seen this put around and we mentioned it too that like the idea of tommy and eddie those are <laughs> words the idea of tommy and eddie being a thing was brought up but then they changed it because and oliver was willing which i feel like at first when that was put out there a lot of people took it like the wrong way because they're like wait was ryan not willing to do the storyline no i think it honestly again it had to do something with like um like higher higher ups and like writing wise that they were like no we're not gonna do that for like whatever reason obviously we don't know 
honestly i have to i have a feeling it has to do with the fact that like the actress that played natalia couldn't come mm-hmm. back to couldn't do yep. more episodes of nine one so they were like oh we'll just have this storyline be for buck i think that's one part of it and mm-hmm. also oliver had already wanted to do that so i'm sure they had that conversation and yeah. then they were like okay this is what we're gonna do also like Eddie has way more to work through than Buck does. Like, yes, yeah. Buck does have his own, like, things and then the, these own, like, storylines to explore with this wise. But, like, if you think about it, Eddie has way more things. If they were going to make that possible, um, they have a lot more to work through. Also, I I like, I like, just thinking about it, I like what we got with Buck and Tommy compared to if it was the opposite way around. And yeah, like I like where we're at, and I, and like I said, like Eddie does have like a lot more to work through. I think it would have been harder for them to like portray that mm-hmm. in like a certain amount of time. I feel like it would have been much harder to like give that right. And I feel like that was kind of on the right track. What you were saying about um with the actress that plays um. Marisol, is that no, her name? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Eddie's girlfriend currently. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is Marisol? I would. Okay. Yeah. I will. Okay. No, my I was no, because I was thinking that like Natalia couldn't film. That's why that happened. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, and I feel like what you were saying about like because of maybe the actress who plays Marisol's um, contract, she was going to be in there for more, and that's why they couldn't pursue the Eddie tommy storyline um and i don't think the way tommy was brought in i don't think it would have gone over well with eddie at first um so i feel like they did the right thing um and i yeah i I think people did kind of freak out that it was uh, like ryan was against the idea or something like that i know i think it was other things that were just not working out and right i'd also like to point out that people are very quick to blame ryan for anything buddy related um including it not happening Again, he has, he can veto it. And if he vetoes it because because for some reason he's not comfortable with it, that is absolutely his prerogative and we should respect it. However, this is not his fault. Yeah, like right. that, there are other points. And also, it's also been brought up that they want to make this, like, whether Buck and Tommy are in game or not, they want to make this a light-hearted love story. It would, they would not be able to do that with Eddie and Tommy as well because of all that Eddie would have to work through. Exactly. Which is also exactly. why you know, people are worrying about, you know, Tommy being killed off or people trying to say that Buck and Eddie are going to get together during the bachelor party and to do that would mean cheating. Um, whenever Which people I are bringing agree up. with that. Yeah. I don't agree with that at all. See, people have oh, no. the craziest fan theories, and I'm like, where did we get all this from? Like, are mm-hmm. we, cl- we're, I feel like we're clowning, just some people are clowning a little bit too much, and I'm all for like clowning and thinking of crazy theories, but like, um, some of y'all are just, I don't know what you're trying to achieve. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Buck and Eddie got together by cheating. I would no longer support the story. I agree. Because, yeah. Since when did we decide that cheating is is okay? Yeah. If it's just the main OTP that we want, no, 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 they're yeah. not going to do that if they do put them together. And also, that's just not what's going to happen. So you know, yes, exactly. clown, but like clown responsibly. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so th- those are just my little sense being broken sprinkled in there. But no matter what happens, you know, we're going to have a lighthearted love story, and this is going to be really cute. Mm-hmm. this is another thing i had been thinking about like a little bit recently i feel lucky that we through seven seasons of the show that we haven't really lost anybody anybody that we've lost has been like in a flashback okay. and i think that's pretty yeah. rare for a show and a lot of times when people are killed off the shows it's likely because they want to leave the show and that's just where the storyline goes mm-hmm. um but you know if you think about it when they when they were trying to write off michael they could have easily killed him off right easy but they didn't they could have honestly they could have even killed off elbert obviously there's it would have been it would have just been like too close to the kevin storyline so that's 
probably why they didn't do that. But there's, like, so many characters that have, like, left the show that, like, they could have easily gotten rid of. So, Mm -hmm. They seem to have an... Yeah. Yeah. I think that just says a lot about, like, their writing, where they're not going to just, like, kill off everyone just for, like dramatics which i like yeah. because you can also tell from the vibe of the show that's not really what they're trying to go for mm-hmm. yeah which i really like i i do because like i watch so many shows where like that like a character is dying like almost every season i'm just like I, my heart cannot take this because mm-hmm. that's how emergency procedures have done it in the past and so I think it's super important that they're, they've marked themselves as a show that's separate from that. I think it's really, it's good. It's a breath of fresh air, you know? Don't have to worry about it as much. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, it just, like, they've had, like, the idea of death in there where it's not like, oh, these first responders, like, they're like I don't know what the wording is but like they're never good nothing ever bad's gonna happen but like they don't also do it where they're gonna kill everyone off yeah like they're not invisible everyone everyone is just extremely lucky yeah yeah but yeah. even taking the fact that you know Buck died for three minutes and 17 seconds right. he's not <laughs> yeah. immortal no he is not yeah and honestly everyone on the 118 I'm pretty sure has um gotten hurt in some capacity i think so yeah because eddie got shot buck has had his time around the sun with all his stuff bobby athena i feel like maybe hen is the only one that hasn't had as much and she's been lightly hurt hen like indir like the only thing that really she had happened was like with the jonah situation and her and chem being in the hospital Mm-hmm. And also, she got lightly hurt during the bridge collapse. Yeah, which that was at the end of season, so they really didn't show us. She she was also trapped in the earthquake in season two. Yeah, but you're right. She was. She was. She okay. Let me put it this way: she was put in the <laughs> line of danger. I mean, they're all yes. put in the line of danger. True. But like, she was never like we were never like ooh, let's worry about Hen. Like they never yeah. put that out there for us. True. Meanwhile, Jim was the very first one to be like severely hurt with the rebar through his head. I know that scene popped up, I forget um where last night, and I was just like, uh, oh, what a time, what a time. Like I I can't wait to like rewatch all these things when like shows are on hiatus. I'm actually really looking forward to rewatching season one. I know, and I haven't said that in such a long time, or ever. I haven't either. I don't think any of us have said that ever. Let's go watch season one. Usually we're like, no, let's not go rewatch season one. Like, I'm never going to tell somebody to watch night one and then to skip season one. I don't I don't. You can't. There's too much important stuff that happens. Yeah, Mm -hmm. even if, like, some things are, like, a train wreck, there are, like, so many important, pivotal moments for a lot of the different characters, so I don't that is like not okay i'm also like one to like follow the rules so i'm like i gotta watch this even if i hate it right but yeah we went a little off track is there any more of lou's uh interview (laughs) no and i will i will for anybody who's interested i will like link these so you guys can check them out because they are really good um Mm -hmm. interviews there then i know there's more that are coming out um, and if anybody has any questions or if you want us to like address anything that we're mentioning in interviews specifically, we can always do that like in a future um, mm-hmm. episode or anything like anything that I didn't bring up. I brought up quite a lot, but those are like the main points. That's why. Yeah. Brought also, up those. anyone who is just I just saw this for anyone who's looking to like learn more about Tommy or hear more from Lou, go check out his cameos that he's made. Because there are a bunch of published cameos online that he gives a lot of info about Tommy and his perspective and how he's working Tommy. I've watched several of them. They're so good. Yeah. And they're all over online. They're not even just on Cameo. You can literally find them everywhere. Oh, yeah. I've watched them all through Tumblr. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're on Tumblr, TikTok. I don't know about Instagram. But they're literally everywhere. I'm sure they're on YouTube, too. Um, yeah he's he's dropped some stuff um he's had some really good ones um he's he's supportive of 
um, buddy, um, I, which is kind of funny, but also like cool that he acknowledges the fans and I'm, I'm excited for what's coming. And I think we all should be looking forward to, it. I'm just happy we're getting the season um mostly kind of ending around the same time that it normally does and then we should have it back in the fall um yeah cross your fingers i think it will but you never know you know what'll happen because i've watched shows on abc where like it was a normal year um and stuff and like you're like oh this show will come back in the fall and then it's like no it's coming back in january (laughs) <laughs> so i just i don't want to put all their eggs in one basket mm-hmm. and expect things and then obviously it doesn't right but guys also lone star is coming back i know like it feels it still feels so long away but like it's really not and it makes you a little excited that like they could be like premiering around my birthday Mm-hmm. oh my gosh yes that'd be so cool yeah i think this is good i'm glad we did this we don't often get to do this because we usually not follow lone star but i'm glad that we had a chance to do a lone star or a 911 uh wish list yeah yeah that that's Very one fun. thing i'm that's one thing i'm really glad that's a like the one thing i'm happy about with how the seasons like the different seasons got paced out between mm-hmm. lone star and 911 i feel like we can like put our attention to both of them yeah and i i love that Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. and we're always open to doing one in the future because you right. never know. Absolutely. We just okay. love making contact. We love being number one fans. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, thank you guys so much for joining us and listening. Be sure to subscribe to the co- podcast wherever you get your podcasts. You can also check out our website, nine one dot com, um, and you guys can follow us on our socials at 91LS Roundup on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, threads, everywhere. We're everywhere, practically. And mm-hmm. check out our Discord server. We love chatting with you guys over there. The link will be down below, and then also you can check it out on our website. And then you guys can follow me, Katie, at Tarlos on Instagram, TikTok, and threads. You guys can follow me, Grace, at Ronan Rathla 911 on Instagram, and at Girl 31 on Twitter. You can follow me, EJ, at EJ8302 on Instagram, threads, uh, Twitter, what is it, X now, and EJFredrickson.com. Bye. Bye. Bye.